Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, she fell and she got right back up and she got right back on the horse. And, okay. Yeah, like just no fear. So the, the next day she was right. She 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 rode the next day too. And uh, part way through, she was like, "Dad, I'm sore." Like, yeah, well, take it easy. But no, she didn't. She just kept on going. Mm -hmm. I think we should upgrade the wireless mouse here a little stronger. We could upgrade it all right. Here I am. You need this? Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Alrighty, so it hangs off here. Good. All right, we'll go ahead and call uh, this evening's meeting of council to order. Please note this meeting will be held virtually and available for public viewing on YouTube. As part of the public participation, if you have any questions regarding items on the agenda, please submit them by email to mail at ektwp.ca. Questions received prior to the meeting will be addressed during the public question period, which is limited to 15 minutes. Uh, first item of business is the adoption of the agenda. I'm looking for a mover and seconder. Moved by Councillor Smith, seconded by Councillor Predijon, that the regular meeting of Council March 8, 2020 agenda be adopted. All those in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Does any member of council have a pecuniary interest with regards to any item on tonight's agenda? And if so, the general nature thereof? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on then to the adoption of the minutes. We have two sets of minutes. I'm looking for a mover and seconder to receive both of those. Moved by Councillor Brayton, seconded by Councillor Renault that the February 22nd, 2021 regular meeting of council minutes and the March 1st, 2020 special meeting of council minutes be adopted. Any corrections, questions, or concerns with regards to either set of minutes? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor? And that's carried, thank you. Alrighty, we do have a uh, delegation this evening, uh, the Frontenac Arch Biosphere Network regarding the local flavors uh, program. I see we have uh, Helen Ann Hudson here. I'm not sure if there's anybody else from the group who's also gonna be uh, joining us at the virtual podium, but uh, at this point, we'll wait until we can get uh, Helen Ann actually connected and live in the room. And then we'll hear from her regarding the local flavors. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we certainly can. Can you see me now? Oh, you can see me now, right? <laughs> um, okay, so um, I'm Helen Ann Hudson. I'm the co-chair of the board of the Frontenac Arch Biosphere Network. We're the group that administers the Frontenac Arch Biosphere Program, and I want to thank you Mayor Burroughs and councillors for allowing me to speak tonight to you. And so I have a very short presentation about our local flavors program. And so I'm going to try to upload it now and hopefully it will work. Um, hang on. So I need to share my screen. Let's see, share screen. <clears throat> and so can you see that now? Can everyone, yes, can. See? you can see my presentation? Okay, so it's a very short presentation. It's about our Frontenac Arch Biosphere Local Flavors Program, which is a program that the Frontenac Arch Biosphere ran um, for, 
for several years, beginning in 2004, and the program was um, was kind of abandoned because of lack of resources, and we're trying to reimagine it now. So first of all, I want to um, acknowledge that we are on the ancestral territory of the Algonquin and Haudenosaunee people here in Leeds County. So I want to talk to you about what we are, what a biosphere is very briefly. Um, so we, a biosphere reserve is a region recognized by the scientific branch of the United Nations for its ecological and cultural significance. And so our region specifically is recognized for its biodiversity because we're at a crossroads of several different forests and we are an outcropping of the Canadian shield that is actually um, a little bit lower than its normal range. And it creates kind of a, a, path, a migration pathway north and south, the only one um, east of the Great Lakes that allows animals and people in olden, you know, back in, back in the days of the indigenous people to traverse north and south in this area. The Frontenac Arch Biosphere administers what's called the UNESCO Man in the Biosphere Pro Program for the Frontenac Arch Biosphere. So our mandate includes um, conservation, education, and sustainable development. So this gives you an idea of where the Frontenac Arch Biosphere boundaries are around the yellow um, borders. Those are the boundaries of our biosphere. It includes, um, it's kind of an area where rocks uh, kind of pop up out of the ground in an otherwise flat landscape. And we have lots of granite rocks, lots of wetlands and lots of trees in this area. It's very unique, very different soil types, which leads to, you know, different flavors in your farmed products. So we are currently looking at applying for the Healthy Communities Grant Program. It's $31 million available from the Government of Canada, but only small amounts in you know, specific areas. It's to transform public spaces and make them COVID-19 resilient. It's to provide innovative digital solutions to connect people. Um, and it's um, partnering is an important part of this application. So we are trying to rejuvenate our local flavors program with a digital mapping program to provide virtual networking infrastructure in this area. So local flavors, um, we are partnering, uh, FAB is partnering with the Laurier Center for Sustainable Food Systems and with Queen's University to bring this program back to life. Laurier Center for Sustainable Food Systems is in, uh, at Sir Wilfrid Laurier in Waterloo, actually. To date, we have held two webinars about this and tried to bring together community members. One was on November 20, 30th and one was on February 23rd. Some of the participants we've gathered together are farmers and um, government, which um, includes both provincial and, uh, and municipal, restaurants, digital marketers, and food organizations. We've had a, a suite of speakers, which include local producers and entrepreneurs, including Wendy Banks from Wendy's Country Market and Leslie White from the Brockville Economic Development. So our process is going to be to continue these webinars to gather input from the community, to build capacity and to build a digital tool on our website and maintain it. So just to give you an idea of what we've done so far um, at the Laurier Center, they, um, they engaged a student who had some mapping skills and she was able to take some local uh, data from addresses of local artists, farms, restaurants, museums, food retailers, bed and breakfast, and she put them on this map. And I can't make the map work the way she did in our webinar, but what she did was she put their information on it and it's live. So when you go on this map and you hover over one of these dots, it will actually give you information with live websites about um, that particular business. And so we were thinking we would do a multi-layered map that would include 
you know, many different businesses. So connecting not only food groups, but also eventually able to connect a host of different types of businesses. So basically, um, this region should really be proud that we have a Biosphere designation. Um, we are working on this local flavors program um, through community input. And we're hoping to rebuild the local food network and strengthen it to increase connections and opportunities for vendors and clients with the opportunity to expand to other sectors. We want to increase the visibility of local food producers and, the, and you know, their ability to connect with the general public, beginning with this digital mapping tool. So support from your group would strengthen our application and um, becoming a partner with us would really strengthen it. And um, uh, joining our webinar process would contribute to the development of this program. So what we're, what we're asking for tonight is just a, um, if you would support our program and write us a letter, write it by writing us a letter of support. But if you would choose to join our program and participate in our webinars, and we could list you as a partner on our grant ap application, it would make our grant application very much stronger. So, so that's the end of my presentation and I'd entertain questions if anyone has them. So Great. I'm, I'm gonna okay, stop Bob. sharing. There you go. Great, I was gonna say, okay, stop sharing then we'll be able to, to see everybody. So that's perfect. Okay, uh, thank you for your presentation. I'll go ahead and uh, open it up if uh, any of the members of council have uh, any questions for you and, and I'll save my uh, questions or comments in, until the end. So uh, we'll start with Council Schmidt. Thank you, Your Worship, uh, to Helen Ann. Thanks for your presentation. Um, just correct me, but uh, I believe you're also running this program or a program at Max Johnson while at the conservation area. So one, we have a few different programs that we're running. You have to realize that we, at, as the Frontenac Arch Biosphere, we're doing a lot to try and, and um, try to, to, you know, run this man in the biosphere program for, for our biosphere. And one of our signature programs is our nature camp program. So we have four different locations for our nature camp. And last year, was the first year we opened up a nature camp at Mac Johnson. And we were one of the only um, camp organizations that managed to run during the pandemic, actually, because we have a brilliant coordinator who went to town and, you know, made sure she did all the right things to put together, um, you know, good COVID protocols in our camps and ran them at about two thirds capacity to, you know, to respect social distancing and everything. But she did a fabulous job. And yes, that is one of our locations for our nature camps. Thank you. Okay, any other questions at, at this point? Yes, go ahead, Council Brayton. Have we uh, ever given my or just before? I don't believe so. Our director of finance, do you know if we've supported this program financially before? Uh, not to my knowledge. Okay. All right. So just a, a, a clarification, uh, Helen Ann. At this point, your, your ask of us tonight is, is somewhat separate from the funding request that you sent in to us uh, before. So this is specifically focused on the, the local flavors. And at this point, uh, you're looking for our participation in terms of uh, the development of, of the ideas, the participation in the in the webinars, but at this point, do you see there being a cost associated with this, say, in this calendar year, if we were to, to become partners in the program? Um, I don't see any costs look, um, associated with it at this point. We're applying to this Healthy Communities Grant, and we're asking for core funding to support us working on this program, which would in part pay for a coordinator who would help to do the heavy lifting for going around and collecting, you know, um, some, you know, kind of getting all the information on all the participants out there and updating our information, which we currently have, which could be a bit outdated at this point. So yeah, we're, we're just, 
you know, part of the granting process, they're saying you need partners. So, you know, if, if, um, if you would write us a letter of support, that would be fantastic. And um, I, pretty sure I sent you one, or I think I sent one to you, Brant, and um, I can resend it and you can tailor it to say what you want it to say. So it describes the whole process. Or if you also would want to continue to participate in the webinar process and would agree to being a partner in, you know, the grant. So we could say on the grant that you, that Elizabeth Town Council was partnering with us that would strengthen our application also greatly. All right, so, so that would be a, a time commitment. So I had a question around the logistics of, of that. Unfortunately, I'm, I personally am just at capacity where I couldn't commit to be able to attend all of your webinars. So I, I wouldn't want to uh, extend you know, my commitment to, to be able to do that at this point. I don't know if there's another member of council who would be able to, uh, if, if we deemed it appropriate, would you be open to uh, participation by members of our economic development committee uh, as as an option. If it turned out that that was the only way that we could follow through on a on a time commitment, is that acceptable to you? I I think that we would be open to taking a member of your council of you know accepting a member of your council to participate on our webinars and you know just to have someone there to provide feedback because you had great feedback at the last webinar we had. And, you know, I don't know how many more webinars we will have. It's not going to be an onerous process, I would not think. I mean, I can't tell you how many we'll have, but there will be a few of them, you know, into the future. So the last one was very successful. People were very engaged and very supportive. So we're hoping the next one will be better than that one and more productive and even more productive because that one was very productive so yeah i agree i found the um, the energy level in in the virtual room to be very high and, and yes. a lot of good discussion for sure uh so so the final point then uh, just so the council is is clear on this uh, you and i had spoken a little, i shouldn't say spoken you and i had communicated by email a little bit on this and so there's a, a really tight timing constraint my understanding unless something has changed in the meantime is the the deadline for your application is tomorrow. You have to get your application in tomorrow. It is tomorrow, yes, unfortunately. I guess it is fortunate that you're having this meeting tonight so I could bring it to you, but it was, but it is a very tight timeline. It's like, yeah, tomorrow at five o'clock Pacific Standard Time, all the applications are due in, so, so. Okay. All right, so ordinarily, uh, you know, t t traditionally we wouldn't, make a decision on the same night as a delegation uh, presents, but I think in, in this case, council will likely uh, indulge me in, in making an exception given the, the type, uh, type timeline involved. Uh, and so I guess what's in front of us is, uh, I'll deal with this in, in two parts, uh, council. Uh, are we at the very least uh, content with providing a, a letter uh, in support of the, the application? And any objections to that? Okay, so I'm, I'm seeing nods and so on. So now the, uh, the big question, uh, and again, nods or, or comments, uh, welcome. Uh, are, do we think that we're in, in a position that even if we were to rotate uh, around the commitment to participate in the webinars and so on, uh, are we willing to, uh, to commit ourselves as being a partner in terms of participation with the understanding that at this point that, that doesn't involve any cost? That's just a, a time and idea uh, commitment. So do we have an appetite for that? So I see uh, Councillor Eady and then Councillor Smith. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Eady. I was just gonna say that if we decided to do it, I'd offer my time to go to the webinars. Okay, thank you for, for that. Uh, Councillor Smith. That's uh, basically the same thing, but if we, if you were into a position, Mary, that you weren't able to go, just do a rotation. Right. As long as there's a representative from Elizabeth Town Kitley, I think that's the key focus is that we're there, we're present, give information, bring information back. All right, so uh, not that this will be a, a, an official vote. I just want to get a, a clear consensus from uh, council, all those in favor then of participating as a, as a partner, if you could just a quick show of hands. Okay, great. Yeah, well, I appreciate that very much. I'm sure Helen Ann does as well. And so, uh, yep, we'll, uh, we'll get the letter uh, to you in, 
in electronic form as early as we can uh, tomorrow. And uh, then keep us posted as to when your webinars are so that uh, we can have somebody participate. Okay, that is so fantastic. Thank you very, very much. And um, if you need me to resend my, my uh, form letter to use, I can do that if you'd like me to. Yep, so. uh, if, you, if you wouldn't mind, because in all honesty, I, I don't recall that that's how our conversation started. Uh, so yeah, let's not take any chances. If you go ahead and, and okay. send it to, uh, to our administrator clerk, it's mm -hmm. yrobert at uh, ektwp.ca. Sorry. And we can make sure that, uh, that we get that done. Sorry. It's, it, oh, okay. Simpler one would be just mail at ektwp.ca. Okay. I think I have that one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very, okay. very much. And, um, you know, this will increase our chances of getting this grant money, which will really help propel this program. And we're very excited about it. So, yeah, it's a real community program. So, Yes, well, thank you. You're welcome. We wish you all the, all the success, and I'm sure that we'll uh, get a celebratory message uh, when the news comes back that you've been successful. So, presentation. <laughs> I hope so. Thank you. Uh, all righty. So that finishes with our delegations. So we'll move on then to staff reports. The first item, uh, 6.1, is a report regarding the monthly waterline reports. I'm looking for a mover and seconder to uh, receive that and also uh, that council confirms receipt of September, October, November and December 2020 uh, County Road 2 West Waterline reports. So moved by Councillor Predijon, seconded by Councillor Edie, uh, as previously read. So any uh, comments or questions around the waterline reports? Okay, seeing none then, all those in favour? And that carries, thank you. Yeah. Item 6.2 is a report regarding the annual water quality. And so again, this, I'm looking for a mover and seconder to receive this uh, and also uh, to, ah yes, receiving the, the overall report 21-29 and also that we receive the uh, annual water quality report dated February 16th, 2021 for the uh, County Road 2 West Waterline. So over and seconder moved by Councillor Linton, seconded by Councillor Renault, as previously read. Any comments or questions on this report, uh, Council? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor? And that carries, thank you. All right. Uh, moving on to item 6.3, uh, this is a report with regards to uh, recruitment for Director of Finance. Looking for a mover and seconder to receive that and also authorize the Council accept the proposal submitted by Waterhouse Executive Search for the recruitment of a Director of Finance. So moved by Councillor Predijon and seconded by Councillor Linton. So I don't know if there are any questions uh, or comments at, at this time. Yes, Councillor Smith. Just a question <laughs> through to our director of finance, I guess. <laughs> so uh, director, um, where are we taking this 19,500 out of? For salary. <laughs> our, our administrator clerk just had a momentary and rare lapse of live judgment. That's why I went to the finance director. <laughs> I, I apologize. That's okay. Uh, through your worship, Councillor Smith, uh, I believe that uh, funding could come from the uh, administrative reserve. Okay. All righty. Any follow up, uh, Councillor Smith? No, that's okay. right. Any other questions at, uh, at this time, Council? Okay, I'll go ahead and call the question then. All those in favor? And opposed, if any? Okay. That does carry, thank you. All righty, moving on to item 6.4. Uh, this is a, a report statement of the treasurer regarding council remuneration, looking for a mover and seconder to receive this report. Moved by Councillor Predijon, seconded by Councillor Smith, that report F-21-07 be received. Any questions around this report? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor? And that carries, thank you. OK, 
Okay, moving on to item 6.5. Uh, this is uh, budget update number four. And so I'll turn it over momentarily to our director of finance if you have anything to add uh, to get us going here. Uh, no, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Uh, this is basically a report just to uh, review where the current budget situation is at uh, and some of the changes that have been made since February 8th. Uh, we've provided a summary of the operating budget as well as the capital budget. I would like to say that there was a duplication in expenses of the fire hall number three. So some of the items listed under that uh, were listed twice. So we've uh, gone ahead and corrected that. While it has no effect on the levy, uh, it did uh, slightly adjust uh, contributions from reserve as well as uh, the total debt amount. Um, as the budget currently stands, uh, we have a total levy of $6,743,679. Uh, showing a 4.4% increase over the previous year's budget. Uh, I've outlined in the summary of changes, uh, the changes that have been made in recent meetings, as well as some uh, items that are still to be decided, including the garage study, uh, contingency funds for emergency garage repairs, and the request from the Frontenac Arch Biosphere. Um, I'm also hoping that this uh, document will um, engage council in, in further discussion on the budget. And uh, of course, any questions that you may have, uh, we have some staff here as well. And while I also recall, uh, there was one uh, small issue today uh, with Graham Lake Road. So there are some repairs that are required there. And the director of public works is here to uh, further inform you on that. Uh, potential project. Okay, thank you. That sounds ominous. So maybe before we start the discussion, I'll just pass the baton directly over to the Director of Public Works and have him let us know what we're facing. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Yes, uh, we uh, inspected Graham Lake Road uh, this morning. Um, about a, there's about a 200 meter section of the road just off of County Road 46 uh, between County, County Road 46 and the curve that has uh, degraded quite a lot. And it's primarily at this point, we think it's just, it's due to the spring uh, thaw, uh, a freeze thaw. Um, it has come to my attention that this section of road was not subject to uh, uh, reconstruction back when it was done. Uh, so um, it, for all intensive and pur pur purposes, that has to happen now. Um, we're looking at about a 200 to 250 me meter section um, at, a, at a cost of uh, roughly $65,000. And that would, that would, that would include uh, a single lift of surface treat Treat, treatment uh, with the intent with the intention um, when when the road is on the plan to to receive a resurfacing in the next uh, two to three years that the whole thing would then receive another uh, another lift. Okay, so then so this would be done in in such a way that we would minimize the the redoing of work that is being done? Is that sort of an overview? Uh, I'm not following you. I'm sorry. So whatever work we have to do right now will only be taken to a level that, that it needs to be yes. to, to make it, it last properly Yes. until we're going to do the rest of the road as a, as a project. Correct. As a resurfacing job. Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, thank you for that. Um, so so with that, I guess uh, we'll we'll begin. I'll open the floor for discussion from I'll stop sharing from council. Councillor Smith. Uh, thank you, Worship. Yes, I realize this is uh, budget uh, night number four, but um, you know, uh, council directed staff to uh, prepare a budget not to exceed a two point two five percent increase. And in December. Uh, 
our director of finance uh, proposed a, uh, a budget presented to us at 2.38%, which at that time I would say I applaud staff and the committees for their work to stay within the percentage that council requested. Now tonight we just uh, heard another road project and also facing a 4.4 tax increase over last year. During these difficult times, there are taxpayers who are struggling, some making alternative arrangements to pay their taxes during this pandemic. Some residents were laid off, some businesses closed, and if not, haven't reopened yet. I think we need to maintain our infrastructure and I would support reducing our tax rate to, that is affordable for everyone and not looking at 4.4% tax increase. So that I would just leave it and let everyone else others say, and then we may have to go line item to line item. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other uh, comments or questions uh, at this point? Councillor Brayton. Yeah. Thank you. Some of these other budget meetings, <clears throat> I don't think that we've discussed quite a bit in length, quite a few things, but it was a it was a discussion. I don't think everything was ever set in stone, was it? No, there was certainly incremental direction given as, as we went along. So, for instance, we talked about some uh, positions in various departments, made, made decisions to support that going forward. And so now we see what the impact of, of that is. That's one example. Well, I, I was just wondering, I, got, I went over this thing pretty good today. And in there, in her, uh, in her wish list here, the the uh, new fire hall, we have never even talked about. Well, I guess we did, but we've never made a decision on where the money's come from, how much money's coming, or, or whatever. But I like to, I would just like to talk on that for a minute. Um, the. Uh, Why can't we put in the uh, the uh, chairs and the, a lot of stuff? Of, why have we got to put that in a capital? But can we not borrow the money for all of that kind of stuff and keep the reserves in a, our jeans? Like it, it's pretty it's pretty easy money. Uh, not easy money, but like cheap money, cheaper than they used to be to borrow. Uh, I don't see why we can't add a lot of that stuff that's on the capital. And if I can find them, you give me a minute to find the right thing here, what I was looking at. Uh, I think I got it right here. The uh, director of public uh, director of finance is uh, on there. The in, in red is, is that that is money from reserves, isn't it? There's uh, Councilor Brayton. There's a column for reserves. Yeah, but. Yes, yeah, I, I think I know what you're asking. So the, the thing is, coming out. The, the highlight in red is is the fire reserve. So that entire column oh, yes. for any given item talks about what money is going to come out from one reserve or another. Yeah. And then the color is what indicates specifically which reserve. So so you're correct that anything highlighted in red would be coming out of the fire reserve. Yeah. So as presented for the fire hall specifically, never mind the you know the other equipment, but for the fire hall specifically, the way it reads right now, there'd be roughly almost five hundred and twenty-two thousand taken out of the fire reserve towards the hall. Yeah. Well, could we not make our reserves look a little better and more of that one? Yeah. So, so through uh, to our, our director of finance, uh, I believe so. But I, I think some of the things may not qualify as capital. Perhaps paving wood. I don't know. Perhaps chairs wouldn't. 
Um, I don't know. I'm just saying cheers. That's one of the cheaper things. Yep. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. exactly. So if you can maybe provide some clarity. Yeah. So certainly we can move any of those things that we're funding from the reserve over to debt uh, because it's it's a purchase as a whole. We, we're updating the whole fire hall. Yeah. So while yeah. you know maybe one share isn't a capital item, ten shares within a new um, fire hall would be. So yes, it's completely possible. To Wouldn't that make it. sense? Absolutely, we could do that. And that, on that same thing, I can't find it there. Now, but I, I got a drama memory. Mm -hmm. uh, the chief was looking for a new truck for Toledo rescue truck. Uh, <clears throat> we're we're we got a lot of gifts, not gifts, but a lot of new stuff out there. In Toledo, that are common, and I would like to know why we couldn't just wait another year and do it then. It, that shouldn't have to be this year, exactly it right now. It, like I think we that was three hundred some odd thousand dollars. Three hundred seventy-five. I will note uh, just in in case. Uh, you hadn't picked up on this. That is a 1995 vehicle. It is, it is, but it isn't. A, isn't it, it's it's a very important vehicle, but it isn't driven every day. Mm -hmm. And I think that the miles that goes on and the use it gets that we couldn't maybe get along for another year. And that's three hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. So that one specifically was being split 50-50 between coming out of reserves and coming out of the levy. Yeah. And that's that's money going back into reserves and it's bringing the levy down. Mm -hmm. Like I, Mr. Mayor, I, I've been, I'm getting so, uh, I'm getting a little scared that I don't want to have to go to Poop and Drop and pay cheaper taxes. Like we're getting over our head here and we're, we're we're fixing this, fixing that, and spending money here, spending money there. It's it all comes out of the taxpayers' pockets, and we don't know where this pandemic's going. They're closing down and they're opening up, and they're closing down. And, and if this goes on much longer, people really won't have any money for anything. So, like that in mind, and everybody's using this pandemic for everything. So why not? Use it and say, "Hey, this pandemic is kind of straining our money a little bit." All right. Thank you. If I think of any more, I'll let you know. I'm sure. And next, I see Councillor Renault. Ah, oh, there, got it. If you borrow money, you have to repay the money. Yes, I know interest rates are really low. But does that, and this is just a question, does that affect our levy? Because we have to repay that money and the only place we repay that money from is the levy. So would that increase the levy? And then I'd like to get back to the roads. Okay, so through to the director of finance in just a moment. I, I don't believe there's gonna be an effect on, on the levy in the year when the debenture starts. So I think this is a question with a future answer but I don't believe that there's an immediate effect on the levy. So through our director? Uh, that's correct. So the first payment would be coming out in 2022. And the, we currently estimate that that, pay, that payment on the current amount of that's budgeted for the fire hall will amount to about $152,000 per year. And that was for a 10 year amortization at that Correct. calculation. Correct. Um, and it wasn't quite half, it was a little bit more because the interest is a little higher if we do the, the 20 years. So, Correct. that was 100 and something. 100, 150, I'm sorry. 152,000. Right. For, for 10, 10 years. For how much money? Uh, for um, uh, roughly a million five. Correct. Yeah. So, if you, if you put some money in back into reserves, it would, wouldn't be a million five, it'd be more than that, wouldn't it? Uh, so if, if you're saying if if we took, if we didn't take the money out of reserves and use debt to pay for it? 
Um, we be more money. That's right. Yeah. That's How right. much? Well, uh, whatever, wait, whatever it would roughly, roughly probably be depending on how much we were budgeting for reserves. Uh, if we were budgeting about 200,000 from reserves, for example, it would be an additional 20, $25,000 per year. Could we stand that? Uh, director, could we stand that? The township stand that without biting the boat? Uh, we could certainly afford that. It does take away the option of, of spending that money elsewhere, though. So while we're incurring some fees with interest, uh, the cost is not that high, but we will have to be aware in future years we have that debt payment, and, and that could yeah. take away from some of your capital spending. Okay, so how much how much is can the township borrow? Oh, the township can... Uh, I. I think our uh, debt payments can be a maximum of $1.7 million per year. So we could do, we could borrow far more, though I, I wouldn't advise to borrow the maximum <laughs> no, 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 amount. I, no, 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 no. Yeah. But I don't want to be working on that tail end of the line either, the bottom line. Okay, uh, okay. that's thanks. Uh, All right. Clear that up a little bit. So, so then I think answers your first question, uh, Councillor Renault. Okay, and then uh, you said you had a, a follow-up. You wanted to uh, then weigh in on some roads? Yeah, because that's where I thought we were talking and then Earl went somewhere else. So we've got one road that just blew up in our face. Didn't know it was going to happen. It's going to cost us $65,000. we are spending a whole whack of money, uh, over 400000 on a road with really nothing much on it. What, a half a dozen houses or more? I would suggest we don't do that concession six. We put that money back into roads that need the attention because we have trucks and everything else on that road. It'd be better off gravel where you can repair it more easily than if the pavement gets all broke up in the first year, second year, and we have to do it again. But if we have more roads like this this spring that bust up like this, we are gonna be in big trouble. Okay, thank you. So now back to Councillor Smith and then Councillor Braden. Um, I agree with Councillor Renault. Um, I feel that the uh, 300,000, which is gas tax money, in my opinion, should be going back to the Bruges Road where staff had it at the beginning. Uh, you just supported a project from the uh, Frontenac Biosphere that uses the Mac Johnson Conservation Recreation Authority, which is on the Bruges Road, the largest facility in Elizabethtown, Kelly. And that will free up the $120,000. And that $120,000 can be spent on Grain Lake Road for the blow up we just had. Whatever is remaining from that, back into road reserves. That is all I want to say about road construction. Okay, just one point of clarification. The uh, project that we supported uh, tonight from the Frontenac Parks Biosphere uh, doesn't actually have anything directly to do with the, uh, the Mac Johnson uh, facility itself. That's a camp program that they run. Uh, this Local Flavors is a, a mapping uh, project and a promotional project uh, for the, the entire region. So actually two, two different things. Um, so I, I don't expect our support tonight to affect the traffic on the Rouge Road to Mac Johnson positively or negatively in, in any way, shape or form. Uh, so we'll move on to Councillor Brayton. Yeah, excuse me. I uh, agree with Councillor Renault and Councillor Smith. That, uh, I just think it's, it's a crime to take the road, the funding away from the Bruce Road that really needs it. And with the traffic and the, the residents on that road and the Mac Johnson, and that was the reason, Mac Johnson was the reason in the beginning why it was hard surface, because of the traffic down there. And traffic had any less. Uh, I said it before for years. I know that the promise is a, 
a, a big thing for some people, but people that have been promised stuff and haven't gotten it yet for 10, 15 years. So I don't think that is a, a, a huge selling point. Uh, but I, the Bruges Road, to me, is a very busy road. And we had it in place to fix it, and our director of public works had it down to do it. It's, it's due to be done. It's got to be done. Uh, I just think it's a crime to not do it and not do the Bruges Road and do that down there and spend that kind of money, hard asphalt down there. And I know when they were doing the road before, one of the workers told me, what are you doing this road? There's no traffic. So he's seen it. Like, and I've seen it. I've been down there. And I, I still, to this day, never got a traffic count on it. I couldn't find down there in your music. Okay. <laughs> That's Siri again. It's Siri, I don't know how she comes on there. She knows that I'm in a meeting, I guess. Uh, but anyway, yeah, that's, uh, I'd like to pay very well, but we're not an upper tier, we're a municipality, and it's our job to do gravel roads. That's why we have gravel roads, because we can't afford to keep, build, and maintain them. So that's why we have them, and, and we're doing the best we can, and, we're, uh, and this road out here goes right by the office, needs to be done. The, Halex Road needs to be done. There's all kinds of roads, uh, and the North End be done. It could be done, and we're going to have to do them. So I just, as, and I said before, I got to keep. I want to keep the taxes down, and uh, and we 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 got to we have to keep them down because of this COVID. As uh, Councillor Smith alluded to. We, we don't know what's going to be, how many people is going to be delinquent on taxes. So if we don't get taxes, we can't spend nothing. So this is really why I want to stress to all of my, my colleagues that we've got to quit spending because we have the building over here is uh, the building pit spend the uh, $10,000 or whatever it was, $40,000 on the building, and then $40,000 for a study, that's hundred. That's $80,000. Well, I'd rather put $80,000 worth of paint or something on, on the building rather than stand here a little bit here and a little bit there and do this and do that. We've got to maintain what we got, and we should have been maintaining it all along, and, and we diddled around and, and didn't do it, and we... You know, I don't blame council, I, I don't blame staff, I don't know who to blame, but like, it should have been done. It's, there's no way that that building should have been got in the condition it got. So, so, so thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I, don't mean to, I don't mean to cut you off. I see uh, Councilor Brayton, I'm, uh, I'm gonna go to you, Councilor Brayton, but I just wanna let council know that uh, after you've spoken, if, uh, if council will, will indulge me, um, I have a proposal to put in front of them that I think will surprise uh, Council in terms of what we can accomplish. So I'll, I'll go ahead and, and go to you, uh, Councillor Prater John, and, and then I'll weigh in. Oh, I think you, you just muted your video instead of unmuting the audio. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay, big thumbs. This shall come as no surprise. But uh, I say we go forward as we had already voted on. I don't know how many times we voted on the sixth concession. I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say, Mr. Mayor. I, I, I think that um, it, it looks bad for council to keep running it over and over like a vote is a vote. I, I know we've had different issues with the roads. That, that can happen at any time. I mean, at any time. So uh, just so you know that I, I am in favor of continuing on, I know that doesn't come as any surprise. Thank you for hearing me out. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Prater-John. 
So, um, so I want to start off by addressing uh, De Bruges Road. Uh, and I can tell you firsthand, categorically, there are 24 homes in the segment that we were talking about doing for, for 300,000 between the stop sign and the Haggard side road. And of those 24 homes, the people that live in 23 of them that I found home this weekend across Saturday and Sunday with social distancing, sanitizing between every doorbell, you know, all the protocols in place. I spoke to 23 out of 24 of the people on the Bruges Road and without exception, not a single exception. I explained to them exactly what was going on, that there were two schools of thought around the council table, that one was talking about a, a gravel road that had never been paved before. We were talking about upgrading it to paving and there was a good chance if we did that, it would come at the expense of doing the Bruges Road this year. Would they be okay with that? Uh, versus another uh, thought around the council table was that no, we shouldn't be upgrading the road. We should be spending the money on roads that already exist and, and so on. So I laid it all out for them, the whole, the whole subject matter. And without exception, they all said they were fine with the road being done next year instead of this year. And a number of them actually supported the notion that we shouldn't abandon a project we've already started. We should actually see it through to fruition. So there was no objection from the 23 homes where I actually found people in. Now, with that in mind, what I'm about to describe in the way of the budget, I'm gonna tell you right up front, you'll have to give me $12,500 to accomplish what I'm about to explore. But if you're willing to do that, this is going to sound too good to be true, but it actually works out. So with the 12,500, that's, that is the carrying cost for borrowing 300,000 towards the sand, uh, sand or the, the, uh, the salt sh uh, shelter. That's 12,500 over five years. So that will cost us 12, uh, 2,500 in financing costs per year to unlock a significant amount of cash flow. And with that linchpin change, then we can accommodate the 65,000 that we didn't know about until tonight to get Graham Lake Road done. We can still go ahead and complete the six concession project. We can still go ahead and rescue vehicle that we were talking about earlier tonight. Does shift some of the burden for the fire hall away from the fire reserves more towards uh, long-term financing? So that's in line with uh, what Council Brayton was talking about. Uh, a portion of the, the sand shelter, the remaining 100,000, does come out of the, the road reserves. We still go ahead and get things like the brush head for the excavator and so on. In other words, there are no compromises. We can still go ahead and fund the positions that we've already agreed to for various departments. And at the end of all of that, it leaves our road reserves 238000 almost $239,000 better off than they would be with what we started discussing tonight. And it leaves our, sorry, it leaves our fire reserves, not our road reserves, sorry. It leaves our fire reserve $239,000 better off. And it leaves our road reserves $175,000 better off. So with all of that, I'm going to ask you, do you think that that's a good investment of $12,500? to cost us $2,500 a year. Councillor Smith. I have a question, Your Worship. As you were campaigning down to Bruce Road then, asking these residents what their thoughts were, did you describe to them that the $300,000 was coming from the, to the gas tax fund and not from the taxpayer? Yes, I told them that the funding that we would have used for their road was going to be directed to complete the project on the sixth concession. So I'm gonna make a comment. You're not gonna like it, probably nobody will, but when, when we have staff provide a report and a list of projects to state the reasoning why the project needs to be done, and then we have members of council who I'm gonna say it's a wish list to say, I want a certain road done. I don't understand why we're looking at the six concession road 
That was never, I, I've never received a resident or a delegation from the sixth concession to council or to public works asking for that road to even be upgraded to either surface treatment or pavement. It was a decision made by when this council came in place. And some of these members on council were here previously. So I'm not sure why, and I've asked that question previously, why we're really looking at paving this road. And no one can really answer that. Like, Actually, I, I don't know if there's if there's any uh, gain or any benefit uh, from anyone by paving the sixth concession. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Councillor Smith, that, that your memory is short, but we've been over the facts of the history of this matter. And quite frankly, the council has already made that decision. But I will remind you, <clears throat> this was not an individual council member who brought this forward as a pet project. This grew out of a roads needs study, a staff report at the time that identified it as one of two priority projects. But that decision is, is behind us. So unless you're bringing forward a motion to reconsider, that decision is already made. But I will tell you something. I'm, I'm glad you brought it up simply because it's reached the point now where, where I don't have any more patience for council consuming its time when the engineers that developed the report are getting off scot-free here they need to be in the hot seat and answer this question because it all stemmed from an engineer's report that was solicited by a previous council and brought forward to this council. And that's how this whole bowl got rolled. Councillor Smith. I'll follow up on that. So I've never seen an engineer company ever give a dollar to a municipality to pave roads. The engineer report was very clear. It was possible suggestion It never said it should be recommended to be paid. It was possible suggestion. So I don't think an engineer would say, yeah, go pave that road. They don't pay the bill. It's a taxpayer that pays the bill. I've never seen any an engineer ever come back and say, yep, I think you better pay that road. No, it's a suggestion. A suggestion is, well, do you, do you not? What's the pros, what's the cons? I know where we're going with this tonight, and I and I hope maybe you guys in this council make a decision tonight with this budget. And if you do, good. But I'm looking forward to hearing from all of council on this discussion. So I'll go to, to Councillor Smith, and, but I will ask all council members to respect the decision the council has already made, in fact, multiple times. So there is a process for this. This has to be the final word on the sixth concession, unless there's going to be a motion come forward to reconsider, and that's based on new information or an error that was made or what have you. We've been through this and through this, and I respect the people don't necessarily agree with what council as a body has decided, but that's the way that the system works. We've deliberated, it's been an animated discussion, but we've reached a decision, and at some point as a body and as members, we all have to agree to disagree, respect the decision that was made, and move forward. So, yep. Councillor Smith, I'll rec or, uh, sorry, Councillor Brayton, I'll, I'll recognize you. If it's on the sixth, fair enough, but that's going to be the final word unless we're going to bring back a motion to reconsider. Then we've got to get on with the budget as a whole. Yeah. First of all, can I go down the sixth concession and do what you did? Absolutely. Is there anybody, any member of council, go down and, and uh, do what you did? Absolutely. Why not? Right. Is that right? Okay. Let me tell you something. This end of the sixth concession, Mr. Mayor, is right on roof, like right on top of the roof. Uh, the councillor that brought this up, the sixth concession, Highway 406, I call it. Uh, lived on this end of the road, just off New Dublin Road. The engineer done his study on this end of the sixth concession, and it's just, I've told that story more than once, but nobody seemed to listen. More than once, the, the, the uh, recommended a single lift from hard surface. 
which would fit that rope perfect. Down at the other end where there's sand in the sand hills, no engineer in the right mind would recommend a single lift down there. So where this engineering thing comes from, I don't know. But I do know, and I was sitting on council here, and I do know what I'm talking about. It was for this end of the, the sixth concession. It wasn't down there at all. It was nowhere near the where they want to pay it now. So I'm getting sick of it too. I'm getting sick of this coming over here and talking to quarter to 11 at night a bit. But I like to swear, but I, I guess I they kicked everybody I do. But it's, it's just a waste of money as far as I'm concerned. The, the, the road goes nowhere. Down in the sand hills, I asked the, the people at uh, I asked the people in Augusta, when are you guys going to pay your your uh, end of the road? They looked at me as if I had two heads. Never, never. They said, "Not that." Right. I understand, and I don't mean to cut you off, but but we're we're aware. You know, you brought these things up, up before. I so. have brought them up before, but I don't know whether it was clear enough to everybody to understand. It doesn't seem like it. it's just got to the government. People got in their head this sixth concession, the sixth concession, the sixth concession, this 406, as far as I'm concerned. And you, you're paying you spend $120,000 plus what we spent last year, half a million dollars to road go nowhere. And I, I'm not making fun of the people that live there because to them it is going somewhere. But it's just a waste of money and I, and I don't have the money to waste and I don't want to waste taxpayer money. And as far as I know, sir, it's a blatant waste. All right. So, Thank you. so here, here's what I'm willing to do because we've got to put this to bed. So unless somebody is willing to put forward a motion right now that we get the engineer in here to justify what started the staff reports of the day and got this whole ball rolling, and no disrespect to, to your recollection of that it started at the same, but that's not what's on paper right now. That was That's not what was on paper in front of council two years ago when this uh, discussion got started. So I think if we're going to do anything but just respect what we've already decided, then it has to be to get the author of the information that started this whole thing in here to answer the questions. Because if you're right and a mistake has been made and they really meant to refer to this segment, you know, that goes between North Augusta Road and New Dublin Road. Well, fair enough. That's a valid reason for reconsideration because there was a factual error in what we based our, our decision making on. But outside of that, yep. we've got to respect what we've already decided. Follow up? Yes, Councilor Brady. Okay, so we will be getting, and I'll recommend that to get the engineer. But I, to, to, the, to this day, I've never got a traffic count on it. Mm -hmm. Have you? No, as as you far as I understand, no, it's all folded into the engineer's recommendations. That's one of many factors that they apparently took into account. And who was the engineer? That was dual engineering that did the Rose Need study. Okay. Well, I think that hey, it it's, it shouldn't be an error on late to get them to go through their books and see what they did. All right. So or, or or come down and look at the road. So, so am I taking it then that you are, are moving to have the engineer come in and answer questions around this six concession project? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir, I am. Okay. I will. I'll move that. All right. And second, I do. So, do I have a seconder for that? Sure, I'll second that. Okay. Seconded by Councillor Smith. So, we now have a motion on the table. I think everybody understands it. I'll entertain a limited discussion around this motion specifically about having the engineer come in to answer questions. Do our administrator clerk? Have you not also already placed a motion on oh. the table to receive the report? No, actually, I announced the agenda item and I didn't actually have an okay. over and seconder to okay. receive the um, uh, the budget. I'm sorry. So luckily through that error, we can actually entertain this motion regarding the engineer. Uh, so I'll open up uh, for discussion whether we're going to have the engineer in to, to answer our questions and either confirm that everything that we understood was correct or that a mistake was made. Okay, Councillor Linton. So through you, your worship to Councillor Brayton, are you, you're saying that we're gonna go and get another paying engineer to come back and do this again? 
And saying that he has it should be in his desk, or the, the elders keep a re record that should be in his desk, which end of the road and where, where it is. It shouldn't be a, he shouldn't have to come down here with a helicopter and uh, 747. He should be able to look at his records and, and tell us what he, he's got, what he's looking at. So this would so if, if he has if we have to get it, I'd rather spend a, a little bit of money to get an engineer down to look at it than spend four hundred twenty thousand dollars down there for nothing. So you're talking about having the original engineer well, sure. who still operates to sure. come back and answer about his report. Sure. Okay. Well, so th does that clarify, Councillor Linton? I just I'm I'm trying to follow this one minute. We we're not spending money the minute we are. I'm just trying to clarify. That's all. Thanks. I think all we're trying to do here, uh, Councillor Linton, is finally put this to bed where, where there can be no question that the information we based our decision on was wrong, that there's some confusion, that that you know, if we're gonna spend the 420, it should go on to you know the different segments that was intended all along, just just to eliminate the, the confusion. I think that's that's the intent of the motion. Am I right? Yeah, I guess I'll let a follow up uh, uh, to spend eight or ten thousand dollars, thirty thousand dollars to save four hundred and ten of who what, what would you do? I'm I'm just, just trying to follow the, the spend no spend program. That's all I'm just trying to follow that. Uh, that's that's good. Pay attention to it then. Okay, take it easy. Pay attention. On the Sorry, Councillor Predator John. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, that $30,000 could buy some paint, Councillor Brayton. Um, I'm totally opposed to uh, the suggestion that we have Jewel come in or anyone else. We have the report. I, I don't think that we've gone this far on anything else. And to have them come in and spend $30,000 or $40,000 on a report and have them justify it, do you really think that they're going to negate their report that we have on paper already. I don't know what the big opposition is to the sixth concession, but I know we voted on it. I've, I myself, I think it's been at least three times, maybe four. We've gone all around the mulberry bush and this just seems like if you can't get what you want, you keep asking the same question until you get the, the answer you want. So I'm suggesting that we, we do not vote to, to have Jewel come in and that we put a motion on the floor to go ahead with the budget as is. Thank you for entertaining my thoughts. Okay, well, we've already got a motion on the table, so yeah. I can't deal with another one just, just at, the, at the moment. And I just want to get a little clarification. I, I don't, could be wrong. I don't think we're talking about spending $30,000 on another roads need study. I think we're spending, we're talking about the potential of spending a few hundred dollars uh, to pay for somebody's time to answer questions about the road study that they already did three years ago. Am, am I correct in that? Okay. Yeah. All right. Just to so follow up. Um, and then I'll get to Councilor. What, what we're asking them to do is come in and look at their report and qualify it to, to see if that's what they meant. Um, if that's the case, and we're not trusting Jewel on this, maybe we aren't going to trust Jewel on anything else. If you think that they have screwed this up, then maybe all the rest of the Jewel contracts are the same way. I mean, I, I don't know, but I just find this process that we're going through here just a little bit tedious and we have voted on it we've got the reasons and for somebody to say the road goes to nowhere i find that an insult to the taxpayers on that road they they deserve the same kind of road as anybody else and we'd already voted on it they know they're getting it they've read the paper it's been all over and yes yeah, so i join you going down the sixth the concession councillor brayton anytime Okay, next we had uh, Councillor Renault. Do we have that? We got Councillor Renault on, on next. Not to muddy the waters here, Tell, but I was shocked. I, I thought I was misunderstanding at the very beginning because I thought it was this end the, of the sixth. I thought it was the end that starts at the New Dublin Road there that our office is on. So I was quite shocked to realize that it was the other end of it that you were all talking about. So I'm thinking that we, not Jules Engineering, as uh, Councillor Prejean has stated, 
I think we at some point are not all on the same page. Somehow or other, we are all thinking something different. And, and I don't think, maybe we don't need the engineer to tell us, maybe the road super can look at the report and say, yeah, we are not all on the same page because I assumed it was this end and not the other end. So, I mean, once you straightened me out, okay, fine. But there was at some point a misunderstanding with some of the counselors. Okay, thank you, uh, Councilor Braden. Yeah, uh, I, that's this this end of the sixth concession, uh, Councilor, and all that. That's what, as far as I'm concerned, is what they did. It wasn't down. There was nothing at, at the time that we talked about it. It was never ever talked about down uh, the other side of the, the county road six. It was always this end, and 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 I suppose it was uh, was uh, between New Dublin Road and Nash Road all these this time it was never never ever down way down there and I, I'm quite sure that the dual engineering wouldn't down on a, on a road down, down on the six and, and the sand I'm sure that they would not recommend a single lift of, of uh, turn and chip when it should be as you prove that it shouldn't be tired so like uh, it's it's a, just a, a misunderstanding or and some work got in somebody's head. I don't know, but first up, I'm concerned that it was, has always been this end of the road. And like I said before, that is that this end of uh, six concession is, is on flat rock. And it would only make sense to put single lift uh, uh, turn chip. There. So I'm gonna give our, our director of uh, public works an opportunity. I don't know whether you came prepared this evening to be able to answer that uh, question specifically for what it's worth. I looked at the original RNS uh, cover document. It was very clear in that document which segment they were talking about, but do you have anything that you're prepared to add at, at this point, director? Sure, uh, Mr. Mayor, I can confirm that when I reviewed the roads needs study, um, specifically uh, about the six concession road, um, in the pages of book two of two, which consists of all of the data that they c collected to assess each road, in fact, six concession road east of County Road Six was ident identified on those pages as a now road. That fact in the of the report, and by that I mean book one, book one of two. And so I think we've seen. So we've seen two of two, but we haven't seen one of two. No, you you probably have seen book one of two. Right. You would not probably have not have seen two of two. Okay. Two of two. All right. And so you don't have any insight as to why it would be listed in one but not the other. No, I I'm not going to entertain right. any right. comment on that. No. Okay. Can I also just clarify traffic counts? Sure. Okay. So we've got. Um, Counts going back to 2008, um, east of County Road 6, of 262 vehicles a day. And then 2013, east of County Road 6, 297 per day. And then finally, 2000 and uh, 16, 400, 304, and just as a attempt, I did have a count done on that section of road recently, uh, let's say February of 2021, and uh, it's the wrong time of year for counts, but it was 259. Okay, all right, thank you. Councillor Smith. Um, I, I respect our director of public works comments regards to the road counts, but I think we're all well aware the road counts not from our own taxpayers. 
as we know, our road joins Augusta Township. You know, this is this is a very similar road situation as we talk about Halix Road West, where we butt up to Front of Young. And we've yet to even entertain surface treatment or asphalt the rest of that roadway either. And we even had a delegation here twice, this council and previous council in regards to that. So as far as the road count goes, yes, I probably will agree with our director of public works, but understand they're not road counts from our own residents, the road counts from other residents. It's a shortcut for the Augusta Township residents into the um, business area of the city of Brockville. Uh, regards to the road study report, the director is correct. We only received book one of two. We did not receive book two of two. Previous council and this council, members of council has asked the question for copies of those as chair. I've sent those out previously from what we have. And what we have is one of two, not a two of two. We do not have the information of two of two. Okay. Yeah, it would be nice to put this thing to bed. I don't disagree. I think we've hashed this out way long enough. But from a comment that was made, I will reconsider and put a motion to reconsider the Bruce Road back on for 2021. Well, we can't. I, I know, I know, until you're finished with this other motion. Yep. So finish that motion and I will reconsider the Bruce Road. Okay. So we're still talking about the motion about whether or not to get dual engineering uh, back to provide any further clarification beyond what our uh, director did uh, this evening. So, oh yes, I'm sorry, I, I did see your hand. Councilor Freddie John, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. There was my hand also, uh, Councilor Linton's. Um, I would like to know if our road is not fixed and it has the the potholes that it does where you could lose a, a car and maybe a couple of uh, trucks and some of the, the mess that's going down there and it's not safe, whether they come from our township or not, can they sue the township for the road being the way it is, particularly when we've identified it, um, even though it's other people going into it. It's the same as coming out to Old Red Road from Brockville, that strip. If, if they didn't keep that up and it was unsafe, something happened, then, then you could sue Brockville. Would that be the case? I don't know who can answer that question. I'm gonna send that through to our director of public works, but I'm, I'm gonna say that uh, I have a, a good degree of faith in our public works department that if the road was, I'm not saying it's in a condition that any of us may like, but I would think if it was in a truly dangerous uh, condition, our public works department would already have taken care of that so that it was not dangerous, but I'll allow the director to my comment, comments. sorry, uh, my comment would be regard, regardless of where the traffic is coming from or where it's going, uh, it is our road. We would be, we, we are responsible for it. Okay, thank you. And I'm sorry, apparently, uh, Councillor Linton, you had your hand up, but somehow I missed that. So you can go ahead with the, I, I'm not interested in getting Jewel back in again, but we can go ahead with that. All right, so I think we've discussed that one enough given the nature of the of the motion. So we're at a point where I'm going to call uh, the question on, on that one so we can get back to, to other business. All those in favor of uh, having Jewel back in? And opposed? You're opposed to having Jewel? Yeah, it's okay. because we already have book two of two. It's just that council has never received book two of two. To see the information, Councilor Brayton, that only staff has. We only have book one of two to even give us the description. The description is not in there. So our, our director of public works has already uh, stated that book two of two gives the description of, of the sixth concession east or west, which he can provide to us to state out of the report, which is Jewel report. Okay, and that puts that one to, to bed. The, the vast majority of council uh, did uh, turn down that motion, so that is defeated. You have a, a point of order, Councillor uh, Freddie John? 
No, I don't. I, I thought we were finished with that and I was going to make a motion. Oh, all right. Well, so Councillor Smith indicated uh, he was next in, in line. He indicated okay. that, that he wished to make We're going to get to him. I move okay. we reconsider Cruise Road back on to the 2021 road construction projects. Okay, so do I have a seconder for that? Councillor Brayton. All right, so we now have that motion uh, on the floor. So I will entertain some discussion around this. That is to reinstate the Rouge Road into the 2021 budget. Any comments or questions? Okay, uh, yes, Councillor Renault. Can somebody remind me what the cost, ouch, what the cost was to DeBruge? Yeah, the budget for DeBruge was 300,000. 300,000, thank you. Yeah. And yes, so for clarification, uh, that was originally going to be coming from gas tax. Councillor Predijon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My understanding is that the road is already um, destroyed, I'll use that word, and that our our director of public works said that it can wait till next year in one of the meetings we had before. You did go door to door to 23 homes that agreed with what we were doing in this budget. And I think that's fair enough. That gives us what we should be working with here tonight. Maybe we should move on. Yeah. And so just to, I, I don't want us putting words in the in the director's mouth, but I think he'll appreciate this clarification. I believe I was the one that, that asked him to confirm that the Rouge was already in a condition where we had lost it uh, in such a way that we would have to grind it and, and redo it entirely. And so from that point of view, it really wouldn't make any difference if it waited till next year. And, and he confirmed that that was an accurate description. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, so I'm getting a nod from, from the director he wasn't suggesting that it should wait till next year, that just that it could without that type of repercussion. All right, and so I had uh, Councillor Smith uh, ask me to call the question. So all those in favor of reinstating the Bruce Road into the 2021 budget. Can I have a report vote? Okay, so I'll turn this over to our administrator clerk to uh, administer a recorded vote. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Councillor Renault, did I miss your hand? There's, there's like a two or three second delay and sometimes I, I miss those. Go ahead. How do we pay for it? Well, so so let's deal with that if it passes. If it passes, then we have to have the discussion of how we're going to pay for it. If it doesn't, then that's a moot point and we would be wasting time. So let's but do it. Really in, in, it you, you can't vote on something if you don't know how you're going to pay for it. I mean, I am all for doing to Bruges Road. I am not all for doing to Bruges Road if I don't have the money to do it. Yep, I'll turn back to the mover for some, some clarification, uh, Councillor Smith. The clarification will be that the Bruges Road would be reinstated. It would be reinstated back in the way it was back in December, which was 300000 coming from gas tax. That's what reinstate means. Uh, you're muted, Councillor Renault, if you want to follow up. So then how do we pay for the other road that we took the 300,000 from this one to pay for that one? I, 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 you can't pay Peter with Paul and it just doesn't work. You can't rob Peter to pay Paul. I think you've got to the very nub of the issue, uh, Councillor Renault, and you just exposed the, the very reason that this motion exists. So Councillor Smith did ask me to call the question. And so I will do that. All in favor of reinstating the Bruce Road into the 2021 budget. You are recorded. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, Madam yeah. Clerk. Uh, Councilor Brayton. Reinstate. Councilor Smith. Yes. Mayor Burrow. No. Councilor Renault. Hmm. <clears throat> Yes. Councillor Edie? No. Councillor Linton? No. Councillor Pretty John? No. The vote is four against and three in support. Therefore, the motion is lost. 
Thank you. Thank you, Council. So now we're back to uh, the budget discussion in the broader sense. Uh, and I'll take care of a, a small administrative issue right now. Really, we should have the motion on the floor to be uh, receiving this report and then discussing around that motion. So at this point, I'll entertain a mover and seconder to receive uh, the report uh, for budget discussion. Moved by Councilor Smith, seconded by Councilor Credit John, the report F21-08 be received. All right, so now we will uh, pick up the discussion where it left off before we started talking about the, uh, the two roads. Um, so I believe prior to that, uh, I had just put in front of uh, council and I'd be, I'll be happy to share the details and the mechanics of how all of that is accomplished. Um, but I had put forward a, a concept uh, to, to council for how we could move forward and not dip as much into reserves, bring our levy back down to two and a half percent. And we accomplished that by uh, taking on a certain amount of debt at a total cost of 12,500 over five years uh, to help fund the, uh, the salt shelter. So that's where we were at. So any discussion around that? Councillor Linton. I'm in favor of going with that program. Okay, thank you, Councillor Smith. So because it's, it's pretty fuzzy when you don't see anything in front of you. Um, so I'll ask the question to our director of finance. So back to the discussion that we were talking about the debt, the payment of the debt. So what will that be now per year over the 10 year period? Through your worship to Councillor Smith. So we had anticipated, originally anticipated a 10 year loan on the fire hall at $150,000 per month payback. Mm -hmm. Uh, an additional loan of $300,000 uh, over a five-year period. Um, I actually don't have the funding in front of me. Uh, I think the mayor could probably, I think the mayor has, sounds like he's researched this. So he could probably fill us in on what that monthly figure would be uh, going forward. Yeah, so I went to uh, Infrastructure Ontario's uh, site uh, I used a, a pessimistic rate of 1.5%, so I believe the actual calculation will come in less than this. Uh, and in this particular uh, case, I chose semi-annual, could, could be annual, but uh, so with a semi-annual, the, uh, the total, total payments would be uh, 62400 per year for five years. So that's an annual payment of uh, 62,000. So a little over 5,000 bucks a month. To our director of finance. Sorry, yeah, uh, your worship. Uh, the director of public works just informed me that I said $150,000 per month. Yep. It's actually annually, yep. my, my apologies. Yep. Okay, so where are we now per month? Per annually, not month. So annually, that would be approximately two hundred and ten thousand. Okay, so just want to make a few things clear. That's two hundred and that's two hundred thousand dollars automatically going back in to the levy. Okay, which is roughly uh, what three percent, give or take. Plus, we also have a, another debt. That has to go in next year as well. Okay, that's a, that's, you're now you're looking at uh, well, you're four percent plus, and um, so you know, and, and yeah, you you might have taken some some money from the reserves and, and you're putting into debt, uh, but you know you got to start paying the reserves back as well. You know, like. It's quite, it's quite a, what I call the wish list. Um, yeah, you might have brought the budget down to uh, a reasonable 2.5%, which I will probably support because of that, not because of everything else going on. But um, I still have another question in regards to finances. And that's going to come down to operation budget. And so is because we don't have a planner, I want to know, is there a dollar amount 
set aside in the operation budget to offset the costs of these planning consultants that we have presently going on for our work. To our administrative clerk. Um, as we're operating right now, we um, have not budgeted for the extra amount for um, support from our planning consultant. That goes to the next question. Where are we gonna get that money from then? Reserves? It was not gonna be underneath the regular levy underneath operations. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't see a pot of gold at the end of the line here. Any That's other, all. any other uh, members of council? Yes, Councillor Freddie John. Thank you, Mayor Burrell. Would there be a contingency in the uh, planning department to contract out, or a contingency somewhere within our budget when we contract out for lawyers or? consultants or any of that and how um how is our assistant planner in keeping things up i know that she is working hard at, at uh, planning as well so i just wondered how how if we had a contingency like you would in a in a house if there's something in the budget to cover when you have to contract out thank you so um, I'm going to go first to our, our director of finance to confirm this. I, I believe we do have a, a planning reserve that is uh, sitting at close to not quite $100,000. Um, so is that an appropriate uh, source under these types of conditions, uh, director? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Normally that uh, reserve is set aside for the official plan. Uh, I would need to speak to someone in further detail to, to see if that uh, fund is adequate to support both uh, changes to the official plan as well as uh, contracting out. There is there is a operating budget line in planning though that does address some degree of contracting uh, in a regular year. Um, it could partially support some of the contracting expense. Okay, and I'm also gonna give our administrator clerk a, a chance to, to weigh in. And council will, will appreciate that uh, we have to be careful how much we discuss personnel issues in, in the open, but from an operation standpoint, I think there may be some insight that we can at least share uh, with council. And Madam Clerk, uh, regarding our current capacity. Um, but budget wise, as Diane said, there is some um, in the budget that is used for um, consultants. And there is uh, there is the general admin reserve that we could probably, but again, that's reducing our reserves on a regular basis. There's always the there's also the concept of, of uh, capacity right now, and we are um, relying heavily on uh, the planning consultant, and and the structure of that department needs to be looked at and uh, in consideration of service delivery review and brought forward to council for consideration to be able to fill the gaps that currently exist. We cannot, in my opinion, we cannot continue to exist as we are today. Okay, thank you. I did see another hand up on the, yes, Councillor Renault. Just wondering, does the fee for service in planning not cover the costs of the planner? No, or I don't believe so. Uh, a portion of the, the, the fees, uh, particularly for a zoning bylaw amendment or a uh, severance application and things like that, a portion of it is covered, but not a great portion. Um, the concept is, is that property owners should have available, or the concept was, the, the property owners within the township should have the ability to call to ask a question. So that that cost is, is carried by the by the tax rate. Okay, and did you have a follow-up, uh, Councillor Bruno? Okay. Any other comments or uh, questions? All right. So we have we're sort of at an, an interesting point. Um, I haven't really shared you know specific column by column uh, details of the of the plan. 
I will say I did run it by uh, our director of, uh, of finance uh, and, and I don't believe that our director saw any uh, red flags in terms of the mechanics. I think all the math and so on worked out. Uh, so, so I'm happy to entertain any specific questions if there are any. Uh, at the, yes, Councilor Brayton. How, how, how much money are we going to borrow for the fire hall? At this point, I, I put it back to, well, sort of the original concept. So in rough numbers, the 1.5 million that we had sort of talked about all along. And so right now this plan would, instead of taking 521,000 out of the fire reserves, it would only take 283. And I'm happy to, to adjust the numbers if you know, you're wanting to, to suggest something else, but that was just, that was one way that, that this all worked out. So what are we getting in, in, the, in, the, in this budget? Are we getting all the buildings and all the roads and all this that are, that are, are down here? Yes, the one exception was that at the start of the budget season, as we all know, the Bruce Road was listed on there and it's not on there moving forward. Other than that? But other than that, it's the same vehicles. It's the brush head for uh, the, the excavator. We're getting the excavator. We're getting the emergency vehicle. Uh, salt we're, shed. We're getting the salt shed. And a new birch grad. Uh, not a new works garage, but there there is uh, the immediate repairs, and I believe at this point, um, to our director of finance, that's the one thing that I wasn't one hundred percent clear on. the The figure that you have shown for operating does or does not include the items still to be decided. So, for instance, the ten thousand contingency, the front neck arch biosphere, and the uh, the garage study. I think the garage study was being funded from. The strategic initiative so that doesn't affect the levy uh, but i don't know whether the contingency for the actual repairs and the, the small ask from the, the arch biosphere are they already built into that new levy figure that you had, had shown uh they are not because they were not decided right. so okay. i've listed them there for discussion uh okay. but they are not included okay and our, our uh, tax rate is going to be 2.2 2.5 Two, 2.5 and the levy is not going to screw it up. No, that, well, so the levy is going to increase by 2.5%. I don't know exactly what our tax rate works out to, but we always talk about the levy because it doesn't matter whether it's our rate or the change in value of your home. At the end of the day, you're still going to reach into your pocket for a certain number of dollars. So that's why well, we talk uh, about uh, the levy. So I, I think our director of finance is calculating away. So at some point we'll we'll probably have some answers around dollars and, and maybe even a tax rate. I don't know. But in the meantime, Councillor Smith. Well, and so then I see you, Councillor Renault. Since we're playing with the dollars, so I'll put forward the um, the recommendation that we uh, put in the the request ask of two thousand seven hundred and thirty dollars uh, for the Frontenac Arch Biosphere. As a report F21-08, which is a 2021 budget update meeting number four, down at the very bottom of that report. Yep. Okay, fair enough. And so you're making that as a motion, are you? Yes, sir, I am. Okay, looking for a seconder then for that motion to add uh, in the Arch Biosphere support. And so, Councillor Renault, I see a seconder. Okay, so we now have, now technically I shouldn't do this because we have a, a motion on the, on the floor to receive the report, but I don't know that we have. I suppose I could call the question on receiving the report and then entertain new motions. That's really how I should do it. So, so let me go ahead and do that, Council, so that we have a path forward. All those in favor of receiving the report, was, which was simply the presentation of the budget information to start this discussion. And that carries. Okay. Thank you for that. All right. So now I'll, I'll go ahead and entertain Councillor Smith's uh, motion, which I believe was seconded by Councillor Renault. So any discussion on supporting the inclusion of the uh, financial request from the arch biosphere. Okay, I'll go ahead and call that question then. All those in favor? Okay, and that carries. Thank you. All righty. Any other uh, comments with regards to uh, where we're headed with uh, with the budget at, at this point? There is still one outstanding item, and that is the uh, the ten thousand uh, contingency for the garage repairs. Uh, Councillor Eady. Sorry, what'd you say at the end there, Brent? <laughs> we're, we're left now 
with having to make a decision around uh, the undecided $10,000 contingency uh, funds for carrying out immediate and critical repairs on the new Dublin garage. So that one still has a question mark around it from the operating side and at this moment is not included in, in the levy. We need to make a decision yes or no. Okay, I say yes. Okay, well, so we'll entertain a motion in a moment, but I saw uh, Councillor Renault was trying to get in and I also see Councillor Predijon. So Councillor Renault. Yes, I wanted to ask before, you were talking about your $12,500, you're gonna borrow all this money. Rob, Councillor Smith suggested that that was gonna be 4% on the levy next year, not this year. I, I want some clarification from our finance director about that, about you borrow this money, you've got to pay it back at, uh, what did I write down here? 200 or six, 62,400 a year. And I'm not sure if that's everything, but do, how does that affect the levy in the five years to come that it's paid over? To our director then? Yes, yeah, so through your worship to Councillor Renault, uh, if we incur the debt in this year, we will be we will have more purchasing power in 2021. So we will in increase our capital budget in 2021. Going forward in 2022, we will be addressing the debt for that. So it may not increase the levy, but it, it may reduce the number of projects we can by that debt payment amount. So uh, we're we're increasing our budget this year, but we may be uh, slightly adjusting it down next year just to uh, fold in that debt payment. Okay, Councillor Predijon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the $10,000 contingency, is that in addition to what we've already budgeted for the work scratch? Um, I'll turn to our director for some clarification. I think what we budgeted for our works garage is based on uh, whether or not we're successful getting a grant. If you're thinking about the large ticket items, there's $100,000 uh, worth of, of various equipment. Is that the line item that you're thinking of, Councillor Predijon? Well, I, I just wondered, was the contingency for the work we were doing on the roof and the septic and the bathroom in case, you know, the, to keep the building standing, like Councillor Brayton has said, we have to keep what we've got is that the 10,000 okay. contingency for that okay so through to our, our director yes yeah, so uh we set up the contingency fund to address anything that would happen in 2021 given that we may not be doing major work on the garage until uh, a study is completed so uh we looked at what operating uh, budgets were available for maintenance on the garage and given the current condition we decided that they weren't um, they weren't enough uh, should something come up, but like considering the septic system and so on. So it's basically just a contingency. If something comes up, another hole in the roof or uh, something we have to do to address the septic system in the short term. Um, but uh, it, yeah, so it's just a contingency fund for, for repairs in 2021. So what I'm hearing you say is it's just a, well, a little bit of money, but it's $10,000 until we get the uh, consultant's report. Correct. On the garage. Yes. It's, essentially, I guess I'm looking at it as there's a certain amount uh, built into the budget for, for maintenance, but this is a 10,000 top up given the condition of the garage and some of the issues that we know exist. We just don't feel comfortable that the normal yearly maintenance amount that we would put in will quite do it given what we're facing. Yeah, and I'm getting a nod from the director, so there you go. Uh, Councillor Smith. Your no, I was up. just gonna say $10,000 is not gonna to get too far. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a top if, up. It's a top up, but if this septic system has to be done, we, we, we know what the price tag will be with that. Like, I just don't know what, what kind of list there is of what we're doing as far as the immediate repairs. I don't know, our director of public works, do you have any insight that you could offer at this point around that? Um, sure, Mr. Mayor, I, at this point, there is not, there is nothing planned. Uh, there is, at this point, there's no issue with the roof. There's no leaks. 
Uh, the only thing that we do know right now is the septic system is failing or has failed. And we are getting by with, uh, with um, uh, pumping the, the um, tank out on a, re a regular, regular basis. basis. Okay. Um, I, would be, I would be inclined to uh, look into options uh, for temporary repair, um, knowing that we may or may not be looking to rebuild that structure that building that yeah and um uh but, but at this time it is not known what a full-blown yeah. uh, septic mm -hmm. system will um cost because we just don't have that yet so yeah. right. okay any further comments like councillor smith um so the only other thing and i'll get some clarification from our director of finance just to make sure that that uh you know i'm not misguided here but I fully appreciate the uh, the angst that there is uh, around the, the reserves, but one thing that I would point out is that we haven't got, nor should we expect it at this point, uh, our full statement for the year that, that has ended, 2020. But if we think about the budget process from 2020, there were some significant projects that we, we budgeted to either fund out of reserves or, or various other combination of sources uh, that didn't proceed. Of course, the Salt Dome is one of them. Um, Kinch Street, we, we rejigged to take care of a center section of a different segment. Um, so my point is that, that I'm expecting a favorable overall statement coming back from 2020. So if we just consider those two projects alone, then if we budget for something in one year and we don't do it, then we take a look at our reserves for doing it in, in the next year and we're saying, oh my gosh, our, our reserves are getting low that's before the money that we didn't spend in the first year goes back into the reserves because we don't have that statement yet. So, so I don't think that the, the load on our reserves is going to be as bad as when we just take a look at a 2021 year in isolation. We have to factor in that this was not, we did everything we wanted to in 2020 and now 2021 is in isolation. That's not true, there are two big projects that we were going to do in 2020 that didn't get done. So this is a deferral and it, it complicates the overall financial picture a little bit, but it complicates it in a favorable way that, that once all of that comes clear, this won't look as bad as it does necessarily right now. So I just ask council to keep that in mind and or for our director to, to tell me that essentially I'm full of it and I just wasted 60 seconds of breath. Okay, so, so I'm, uh, I'm getting not it. At all, not at all, Mr. Mayor. So. Uh, we try to estimate where our reserves are going to be before we budget to use them in the following year. So I can tell you that uh, to start this year, we were anticipating having just over $6.1 million in reserves. Uh, the current capital budget is budgeting to uh, use just over 1.4 million. So. Okay. And that factors in things like we've saved for, you know, five years or so, maybe six. Uh, a little bit each year towards the fire hall and that's coming out as a part of the transaction. So, you know, it starts to get complicated when you drill down into the, into the details, but that overall number is, is helpful. Um, so I guess at, at this point, council, are we at a point where we feel comfortable enough? Not, not everybody may like the budget hundred percent, but are we comfortable enough that we can say that we're at a, a finish line? Oh, I think there's a motion on the table. I'm sorry. I think there's a motion regarding the $10,000 for the for the contingency. Um, so I think Councillor Eady, you moved that, and so I think I'm looking for a seconder to include the contingency for the uh, for the garage. Councillor Smith, uh, we have as a as a seconder. So final call for any comments around that particular item. Okay. All those in favor of the 10,000 contingency. Okay, that's carried. Thank you very much. All right. So now I think we're at the the point of. Uh, Councillor, do you have a question? I just have one more thing to add. At our library board meeting, um, they were wondering, usually we don't do this, we don't pass money over, but due to COVID, they weren't able to buy as many books as they were allowed to. So they had over $6,406 left of their budget for books and were wondering if they could carry it over so they could purchase books this year. 
So to our administrator clerk, I think the library is a little bit of a unique animal because they operate under their own board and, and under their own legislation. So is that something that they need to seek our approval for? So some clarification? Though the library board functions independently, the vast majority of the budget is allocated by council, therefore okay. it would have to have okay. council's approval to do so. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, okay, so discussion around that. Uh, Councillor Smith. Um, so question to our director of finance. Usually this is no different than any other committee or budget line item. Whatever is not used goes strictly right into the reserves anyways, correct? So like what the Councillor 80 is saying is they have a carryover. They're going to call it a carryover. I don't call it a carryover. I call it it's, it's money that was not spent. It goes into reserves. So to our director. Yeah, so uh, we have no formal policy for the library to put um, um, surpluses into reserve at the present time. It was my recommendation that uh, the library uh, request that we carry over the funding for the books to be spent in the, in the, in the next year. So just, just clarify something. Why, why, why would the library board be any different with money that's not used like all other committees whatever money is not used goes into reserves into their line reserves does it not to our administrative clerk yes but because it's a board they're the ones who should be recommending or asking council to be able to put it in an independent board it's not a one of our departments it's just not automatically done oh okay that, that's clear okay. yeah think of it as a as a budget dollar amount that's just given over to a board like crca or okay whatever yeah yeah so it's not our policy to make it's theirs and so through this request but, but you yeah. see my my point is it's not it's not really their money yeah <laughs> yep the taxpayers dollar yep okay uh yes it's a board but it's the taxpayers dollars paying for it um i um well as far as things we're, we're still in COVID. who knows when we're going to get out of it I don't have a problem of carrying it over. I just don't think it should be just, just because it's carried over that you spend it. And that's how I'll leave it. Mm -hmm. I, I think they gotta be very logical at how they spend this money going forward because who knows how long this COVID pandemic is gonna carry on through 2021. Thank you. Okay. And I saw Councillor Predijon and I think Councillor Edie wanted back in. So uh, Councillor Predijon, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I was in agreement with them carrying it over because of COVID, as Councillor Smith said, and maybe next year they can purchase twice the amount of books to keep the library functioning. Or, you know, I don't know if it was just earmarked for books or if it could be computer programming or something like that, but it would just keep our library advanced if they had that money. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Edie. I was just going to clarify that we we work on a use it or lose it type of budget and this money is specifically used towards books and not using it all kind of shows that they are very safe in how they spend their money. A lot of the times they use uh, the scholastic spare because they get a very good discount on the books and because of COVID that was not run. Hopefully everyone will have enough vaccines that we'll see it run this year, but that was the, the hold up for that. Okay, and of course, this won't have an impact on, on the budget, but I understand why you would bring it up as, as part of the budget. Uh, so, so I guess uh, if I recall correctly, you were the mover. We had Councillor Smith as the seconder for that. Any uh, further comments before I call the question? Okay, all those in favor? Okay, and that carries. Thank you very much. Um, okay, Councillor Smith. So I think before we close the budget or try to close the budget, I do have a question. And... It's more also also a comment. As we know, or as everyone should know, these are estimated, guesstimated costs for projects. What happens when the tender goes out and we receive a tender and it's over the amount that we just approved? Are we not going ahead or we are? Or where is that money going to come from? 
Well, those are discussions that I know we've had a number of times here. And so you're asking a question you already know the answer to. When the tender comes in, staff will give us the results. And then depending on spending limits and so on, if it's a few dollars over, then if it's some low dollar amount, it may be a signing authority. If it's a large tender, it's going to come back to council. We'll discuss it. And that's the time on the case by case basis that we decide, oh, no, we defer the project or we draw the 5,000 over from wherever. Maybe by then there are two other projects that have been completed and we have money left over that we didn't know we would have. So you're asking a question that I think you know we can't answer right now. And there is already a process in place to deal with that as those things come along. You're absolutely correct. I knew the answer. I just wanted to make sure it's very clear going forward. Yep. Thank you. Councilor Pettyjohn. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Before we close out and vote on our budget, I think uh, Councillor Eady had brought up the fact of our recreation probably didn't have enough money in their budget. Did we do anything that night to increase her budget so that we could get more things done or just left it status quo? No, the, um, the discussion was we, we had the master plan that was done, I believe in uh, 2009, as it turns out, uh, was distributed to this council so that uh, members who didn't have an opportunity to see it at the time uh, could see it for the first time and other members uh, could refresh themselves on it. Uh, and so the, the discussion point was made that until we know what we want to spend the money on, then how do we know what, what to budget? I, I almost hesitate to say this because I know that reserves are a sensitive issue, but if, as we get into the year and we consider the master plan, if there's something that's not too expensive that we figure is worthwhile, then it certainly is within council's purview mid-year to say, okay, now that we've got a number of things behind us, not the least of which is the budget process, we're comfortable moving ahead with this project and we can direct staff that that particular project, call it Project X, whatever it is, be funded from the reserves in the amount of Y. So that's, that's one set of mechanics of how we can still move forward, even though we haven't made that decision here and now tonight. I was more or less thinking of the preventative, preventative maintenance of certain things like the, you know, the, the things that were identified that night, I won't go into all of them, but um, the prevent, prevention of, of keeping what we have um, needs to be utilized in the small budget that we have before we go on to do any bigger projects, because there's no point in doing something bigger if we can't keep what we have going is all I was kind of getting at. Thank you. So I can address that uh, concern because on an annual basis there, there, or at least for the last several years, there is a contribution to the recreation reserves that comes from uh, the operating levy. And that amount this year, as it has been for the last few years is $5,000. And I believe the rationale behind that is we don't know what the specific projects are for some of those things. And so the money goes into the reserves so that then we have money available to draw from as these things crop up that need doing to maintain our, our facilities. So hopefully that addresses the concern you have. There is some money to do the very thing that you're talking about. There just wouldn't necessarily be uh, money without a specific discussion to expand our recreation program or introduce something new. But to address that concern, the, the budget already does deal with that. Anybody else? at this point, Councilor Brayton. Yeah, that's, uh, I'd like to point out to Councilor Pretty John that her point was well taken. And that's a point I've been trying to make for several meetings is maintain what you got and, and fix what you got. Thank you. All right, so we're at a point where I'm either gonna have to surrender the gavel to, to move the budget uh, myself or at this one, I would entertain uh, a motion uh, regarding uh, you know, accepting the, the budget as presented, Madam Clerk? Um, I would suggest that the resolution would, or the motion would read that staff be instructed to draft the necessary um, tax levy bylaw for consideration by council. Okay, so so you've heard the recommendation around the, the wording, uh, Councilor Predijon, or am I taking it you're moving that? Okay, and Councilor Eady, are you seconding that? Or do you have a question? Yes, I'll second it. I didn't want you to lose your little hammer. <laughs> Okay, thanks. <laughs> uh, okay, so I, I hesitate to do this, but it's good form. Any final comments or questions before I call the question? No, no, this is a 
final budget? Well, this is for 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 this consideration. Is, yeah, this is for okay. staff to to draft the yeah. the yeah. bylaw yeah. for yeah. consideration. Yeah. So technically, there is an opportunity to have another kick at the can if we really feel that we need to. But okay. hopefully, like it doesn't to reach that point. We'll need to. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> That's not fair to staff. If if you if we've got something that we have to do that you think is going to fly, let's get it done tonight so that by the time the bylaw comes, we've reached the finish line. No, we've got to think of something. Okay. So all those in favor? And opposed if any. No. But oh, you were in favor. Okay. All right. Thank you, Council. She's giving me a hard time. Thank you, Council, for your, your indulgence. I know it has been a difficult process. And there's nothing wrong uh, with feeling passionately about the positions that, that you take. Uh, at times, it took it took some effort uh, to keep it on the rails, but I'm glad that we finally reached a, a point that we may not all like 100%, but sounds like we can at least live with for this year. So thank you. All right, so we already did uh, deal with the motion to receive that report, so now we're back on to the uh, agenda schedule proper. This moves on to committee reports. So I'm looking for a mover and seconder to receive uh, the three sets of, of minutes from the uh, adjustment, the library, and the works and waste management. So moved by Councillor Linton, seconded by Councillor Brayton, that the following committee minutes be received. Committee of Adjustment dated February 17th, 2021. The Public Library Board dated February 24th, 2021. And the Public Works Waste Management Committee of the Whole dated March 1st, 2021. Are there any uh, questions or concerns arising out of any of those minutes? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor? That carries, thank you. All right, moving on to our bylaws. Uh, we do have three bylaws for first and second reading. Oh, sorry. Uh, I believe that, I believe that there was uh, recommendations was that? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, okay. you're right. Yep. No, I missed. I missed the one coming out of the, uh, the public works waste management. Thank you. Okay. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and read the uh, the motion uh, that is coming out of the public works and waste management committee, uh, and then I'll be looking for a mover and seconder once you know what you're moving in second. Uh, that the township proceed with the public works facility study, and that the minimum critical repairs to the New Dublin facility be completed in 2021. And the council award PW 2021-01 to Denken Surface Solutions, a division of Daily Dust Control Limited, for the price of one hundred and four thousand five hundred dollars plus HST. And that the council award PW 2021-03 to G Tackaberry and Sons Construction Limited, for the price of three hundred and twelve thousand even plus HST and the council award PW 2021-06 to 535276 Ontario Inc. Huffson Fencing and Guide Rail for the price of $16,200 plus HST. I'm looking for a mover and seconder for that. Moved by Councillor Smith, seconded by Councillor Eady as previously read. Any questions around that? Seeing none, all those in favor? And opposed, if any. Okay, that carries. Thank you. Okay, now we're on to uh, bylaws, first and second reading for uh, 21 12, 13, and 14. I'm looking for a mover and seconder to introduce those bylaws for first and second reading. I move by Councillor Linton, seconded by Councillor Smith that the mover be granted leave to introduce bylaw number 21-12, 21-13, and 21-14, and this shall constitute the first and second reading thereof. All those in favor? And that carries, thank you. Well, you guys have them? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm, Our I'm sorry. Clerk? I just, I wanted to comment on bylaw uh, 21-14, which is a bylaw to authorize the execution of a minutes of settlement. Mm -hmm. uh, we we were asked to get the authorization uh, bylaw as soon as we could, so that when the minutes are settled, which are very, very close, um, I should have had them today. When the minutes are settled, settled, uh, then we will be able to execute them. And this had to do with an appeal for minor variance. 
and it the agreement is actually uh, puts the applicant and its and their neighbors in a better position than what the committee of adjustment ruling was. Okay. All right. Thank you for that clarification, Councillor Smith. Just go ahead. Question of clarification then. So these minutes. So has the tribunal already? No, it was appealed, but um, the uh, the applicant and uh, the appellant, appellant yes. um, negotiated out a settlement. Oh, okay. So that All we right. don't have to okay. go through the tribunal. Okay. All right. Thanks for the clarification. And so this essentially uh, authorizes us to lend our stamp of approval to what they've said. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Alrighty, moving on then to a uh, third reading of those same bylaws. So before I look for a mover and seconder for that, does any member of council wish any of these to be broken out and voted on separately? Okay, seeing none then, I'm looking for a mover and seconder for the third reading. So moved by Councillor Smith, seconded by Councillor Linton, the bylaws number 21-12, 21-13, 21-14, be now read a third time and finally passed, signed, sealed, and numbered accordingly. All those in favor? And that's carried, thank you. Alrighty, moving on then to our correspondence items. Uh, we have three of them this evening. So the motion uh, currently reads that the following correspondence items be received and filed, items one and three and that the following item be received and responded to, item number two. I'm looking for a mover and seconder, and we can review the correspondence. Moved by Councillor Predijon, seconded by Councillor Smith. So, uh, any, any comments regarding item number one? Uh, this is regarding the uh, board, board closure. Just, yes, Councillor Smith. Just a question. I, I read this letter, but can someone please explain to me what the letter was about? To our administrator clerk. Um, the township had supported a, re um, a resolution, I believe, that was initiated by the town of Prescott calling for the federal government to be oh, closed. Okay. All right. Thank and you this is, that. we sent our support to. Okay, thanks. Alrighty, there are no further questions on that one then. Uh, item 9.2 uh, from Mr. Peterson. Comments or questions on that one? That's the one that we'll be responding to. Okay, and item 9.3. Uh, regarding the uh, the puppy mills, currently that is a receive and file. Okay, I'll go ahead and call the question then. All those in favor? And that carries. Thank you. Okay. Yes, Councilor Brayton. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Mr. Mayor, is that the is that the email that Councilor Pretty John was saying that we shouldn't receive? If somebody sends you an email, how are you not going to receive it? No, this was. If he sent this, if, if he got one and, and if he sent this one to the township and we got it, it might be around that way, but I can't see what harm it did to him to send that to a member of council. Um, CC them on. Oh. Yeah, I, I think we'll get some clarification. I do recall that there was one that we were to be expecting to receive and understand there are two different two different versions of receive. Receive is, is an official action by a body. That's what we do here. And then there's receive where somebody sends you an email and you don't have any control over that. Uh, but so, Councillor Smith, can yep. you clarify, is this the one that we were talking about? Uh, no, uh, we'll clarify it very well. Um, I got an email, personal email to my personal email at home uh, from the constituent. This is not the email that I received. So I just want to make that very clear. Oh, okay. 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 Oh, I may, I, I wondered if it was. Yep, no, no, no it's not. Okay. No, this is. But uh, I was just wondering what yes, would be was... wrong with it if it was. Yeah, no, the email I received was the, the resident was asking me to bring it forward as an information item to public works, which I did. No discussion, no decision, no nothing. It's just an FYI, okay. this is what I received. I thought this might have been it. Yeah, no, uh, anything going through to straight to council, it goes to the mailbox, it was addressed to council, and then the council gets a copy. It goes to staff, staff will get a copy. But this was 
the email I was talking about was right straight from my home email. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. All right. So we have we've dealt with the, the correspondence. Uh, so now we are on to informational items. Does any member of council have an information item at this point? Okay. Seeing none, uh, motions and notices of motion. Uh, does any member of council have a notice of motion tonight? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to public question period. Madam Clerk, have we received, uh, sorry, to our Deputy Clerk, have we received any uh, questions from the public, uh, Deputy Clerk? There were no questions received. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we have no uh, closed meeting this evening, and so now we move to the final motion for adjournment. Councillor Brayton moves that the regular council, uh, the regular meeting of council adjourn at 9.09 p.m. to meet again March 22nd, 2021. All those in favor? And opposed if any. Okay, that carries. Thank you very much, everybody. Can you hear that? Hey, everybody. Thanks.